with me. Episode 287. With clever meme. With funny tweet. I'll never leave my office seat. Those who think they know what's right, listen on Sundays to NetHeads, all right? You've got to throw some cold water on this situation. Start talking about nerd stuff. You know, nerd culture is mainstream now, so when you use the word nerd derogatorily, it means you're the one that's out of the zeitgeist. System activate. This is NetHeads with Will Wilkins and Trent Hunsaker. It's a tech podcast. Tech podcast. But we are a sh- ton cooler than your typical geek, giving you the info you need to achieve mega nerd status. Mega nerd status. NetHeads. 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 You guys rock. And now, here's Will and Trent. But we are a sh- No one listens to the radio. I wasn't even listening. I was listening to podcasts. Podcasts are great. Radio's boring. At least we hope they are. Which I think is, is by default just what I say every single time now, isn't it, Trent? I'm pretty yeah, sure I it's. Think so. yeah, yeah, you know, I'm like, oh, gee, I, I hope that. Uh, I hope, yeah, I hope we're better than podcasts, but that's really just stupid. Anyway, folks, hi. Welcome to another edition of Heads. My name is Will. And I'm Trent. If you want to take part in the program, you can. One of many ways. One of them, uh, I believe, is, well, it, it's almost redundant to say this. And it's kind of stupid, yeah. too, because, um, you know, there's so many different ways that you can actually watch us now that or, or interact with us. But the main one, the whole point, Trent, is uh, Twitter. Tell them how they can do that. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, Twitter started started the whole hashtag revolution, the way to search for topics on the uh, this platform that you're using uh, in social medias. Use NetHeads, and uh, you can chat with us. Not unlike Ash Williams, who uh, arguably keeps that hashtag very active. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's he's got the knowing, if you will, mm-hmm. and he's uh, he he's working that, and he's working it hardcore. Um, I don't know. Can you? Can we say hardcore? I think we can say totally. Hardcore. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll do that then. Uh, anyway, you can also find us on Facebook, uh, and I'm just going to say that because you know, God only knows whatever uh, ends up working or not working. So you know, we uh, we roll with the punches. But the nice thing is, if anybody does watch on Facebook, I finally got my head out of my ass and figured out how I could uh, see the comments from people as they're going, which is something you, as a podcast listener, give no shits about. So sorry about that. Uh, but thanks for joining us. Uh, it is. Near the close of 2018, so we are we're recording one last one, Trent. Just uh, for yes, the, s- for squeaking the, it in. Yeah, yeah. Just trying to get a little, just trying to get a little something, something done, a little something, 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 something or other kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, just because you know, uh, it's not like I mean, there are things to talk about. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, it, it's uh, I don't know how we got derailed. Uh, it would require me to re-listen to the last episode, which I, which I haven't done. <laughs> um, but I, I should, uh, actually, uh, find out, uh, from, uh, f- that show how I completely derailed. Oh, that's right. I just always talk about me. Never mind. I know what it was. Um, <laughs> but you actually, you had an experience in Salt Lake City about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something along those lines. And, and all we talked about was just, uh, basically it's nice when a venue knows what they're doing, I think is what was said. Uh, yes. So, but you know, uh, why don't we didn't really go into much detail, did we? I, I don't. I really don't I, think I, we no, did. No, we didn't. No. Well, would you would you care to share your story, sir? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Lovely. Uh, so, so uh, uh, Smotomites will will know that uh, you know Ralph uh, Garman has been expounding and expanding and uh, making a a wider swath in his uh, reach now that he's. Uh, doing other things, uh, not unlike the Ralph Report, um, which includes doing some Babylon shows outside of Hollywood, um, and uh, which brings up the 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 conundrum or or the added uh, hopefully benefit to those who are uh, subscribing to Babelvision is how are they going to see those when you don't have your your dedicated uh, folks uh, shooting it? So uh, I went to the Salt Lake shows, uh, took uh, borrowed a camera, shot it. 
um, and uh, got to got to see a couple of shows that way. It was awesome. Yeah, there you go. That was uh, that was one of those things where I'm like, hey, the guys are in Salt Lake City, huh? Not that I'm taking anything away from uh, Josh Roush. Uh, he he no. does an amazing job every single week when he shoots the live uh, video for Babel. Totally. But th this is just one of those things where, okay, well, we could have just audio that week but we got we got a man on the ground we got boots on the ground we got mm -hmm. we got a guy mm -hmm. that can represent this fellow right here with the pretty beard and the nice glasses and the nice Aww. hat um Aww. and i just figured uh you know for lack of a better term i just figured well you know uh, it's really hard to kind of screw this up so uh, because yeah, and, and, uh, and on and on my end it wasn't that hard to screw up yeah i felt i wasn't i wasn't running the house audio <laughs> <laughs> I felt so bad. I felt, you know, because I, uh, in, if, if you're a fan of Hollywood Babylon, you know that uh, recently I was present for uh, the Napa show that they did. Uh, the following day, and we just dropped this one last week, I was at the Modesto show for Jay and Silent Bob Get Old. And I always, I mean, I, I worked very closely with both venues. Somehow we still ran into an issue with uh, the Modesto show. It wasn't really anything against the venue. We just, unfortunately, there was a little audio bleed and uh, Hell's Bells by ACDC was playing under the opening. So if you're wondering why right. the first 30 to 45 seconds of that sounds like shite, that's why. Um, but anyway, I, uh, I, I guess I take for granted, because, you know, my whole thing is when I'm running the audio on Babel, I just don't want to do... Literally one mistake, Trent. I'm not, and I'm not, I'm right. not, I'm not boastful here. I just no, know no, no, that no. in the past, I've always made one mistake, right? So <laughs> it was almost a perfect show, right? Exactly. It's always that one damn thing. So I was just looking for doing the show well. And I take for granted because, you know, a lot of what we do for, or a lot of what happens for Babel is the same stuff I do here. As a matter of fact, not to, to be too boastful, but one of the tools that we use is something I kind of brought to the Smodco Fold. It started getting used uh, for this morning program, so that way there was a solid playback engine. And then it got repurposed into um, into the, the live Babel show as that kind of, uh, kind of uh, grew and, and evolved more. Uh, because it really does. It's a, it's quite a, an audio visual show. It is very much, you know, it guys, it really I, is. I'm not kidding. Hollywood Babylon is very much, at least it, 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 I would say it the second hand after you get through the, the shout outs and the emails and all that. And then you kind of get into what I would consider to be a standard, uh, kind of entertainment and news review show. I don't know about you. I, yeah. I definitely would. And so it has a, a very large, uh, aspect of, of, um, of audio and video being presented, uh, which is part of the fun of being there. And that's part of the fun of watching Babel Vision as well is because although we do put the media up on smodcast.com uh, on the Babel show page, it's right. not the same as just seeing it in real time because, you know, they'll you, totally. they cut yeah. to the content. And so you get to see everything. It's it's very nice. Well, <laughs> it's very and nice. on top of that, like, yeah, if you've if you've never if you've never watched Babel Vision, you don't um, you don't get. Uh, what's going on during all the segment music, which is Kevin just making Ralph so ungoddamned uncomfortable mm -hmm. <laughs> with 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 the mics and expressions and touching him and and other things. It's it's so funny that, that I, it there is a, a huge added point to it. Yeah, because I'm a little bit closer than the average bear. I never asked, but I know that there was there was a sudden um, something that was happening. And I had to know what it was. Thankfully, before I wrote or asked, somebody finally wrote an email because you would, I think I even mentioned it here on our show. Uh, just, you could tell yeah. that there's always something that happens because Ralph starts. So it's, it was shit that should not be. And then what would happen is they would uh, start the segment. So the music would play. And there's so this week's shit should, mm, would happen. That's what Ralph would sound like all of a sudden. That wasn't me. Uh -huh. And, yep. uh, and, and the, there's a reason why, and I'm not going to tell you. You got to go see a live show. Or you got to go, you know, look at Babel Vision, or maybe one of yeah, the clips and, online. And it, and it was just, it was, it was really interesting too, because um, I, I feel like uh, you and I and Ralph are of the same ilk of like, um, when we do something, we want it to be good. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, 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 especially when you've and and Ralph who puts so much work into each uh, <laughs> Babel episode, right? Trent, he wants it to be a good product. Yeah, I'm hearing you, but we do this when we sit down. <laughs> 
True, true. But but you know, it's 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 like going and 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 doing something uh, for for someone else. You want to represent uh, your own well uh, worth in that, right? You want to be well represented. And it, it was just really interesting to to see uh, uh, after uh, at, at the end when we were cleaning up all of our stuff after the first show. Um, uh, you know, uh, Kevin was was uh, just saying, you know. Oh, you. Uh, I can't remember who he was talking to, but oh yeah, he's don't don't mind Ralph. He's he's just a perfectionist, and that, and you know that 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 all makes part of the show is how, is dealing with stuff and and making fun of it and 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 rolling along. And mm-hmm. and Ralph on the other hand is like, damn it, we've got a product and it needs to be good and people are paying for it, so it needs to be a good product that that's worth paying money for. So it was just really interesting to see, um, not a a, a right or a wrong way of of uh, tackling it, but just different perspectives of it mm-hmm. be- between the two hosts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well. But, you know, at the same time, like you said, Ralph put so much work in it. Ralph does this. And really, oh. Kevin is like the silent passenger that just kind totally. of, well, not even that. He is the, Admitted, self-admittedly so. He, he says that, you know, he, he just shows up to make dick jokes. And, and Ralph does all this, this legwork to make it happen. Uh, by the way, Trent, on, uh, on Facebook, uh, Dylan John Maziotti says hello. And John Miller has joined us from uh, FCC Free Radio. So, uh Welcome, guys. Oh, nice. nice to see you hanging out with us on a Sunday night. So yeah, so it's I'm glad you got to see that, and I know, you know, I got I saw people's reaction. So I hope the guy was Spencer. Was that his name? Yeah, uh-huh. Spencer. I don't know. All I know is before the Napa show, I was pissed scared because of that one audio clip where they're like, "Don't fuck it up to the one guy." You know, don't be as such and such. Can't remember who it was, and yeah, yeah. And I think Spencer now has that new moniker. But you know, that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one of the challenges you get when you're you're working with like a laptop you've never worked with before and you're trying to yep. get uh, you know what really happened I feel so bad for him because the first night you heard a lot of buzz because he was having to unplug and plug in his phone over and over yeah a- and really all he needed oh it's Spencer King is Dylan John Maziotti I guess maybe I don't know. oh no yeah Spencer yeah, Dil- uh, yeah Dylan's the uh, uh, graphic designer gotcha. for the club. Now I'm with you. Oh, good. Well, let's talk shit about the club while somebody's listening. No, we're not talking shit at all. <laughs> anyway, I felt bad for uh, for Spencer because he, uh, you're dealing with technology you're not familiar with, and really, all you really had to do was go into the settings and then just say you didn't want to mirror the display, and then what was projected. And then it'll give you, and then it'll give you two separate screens, two separate monitors to work from. Yeah, or. Uh, drop drop the the input down to zero or down to negative as low as it'll go. Unplug it, and then plug it back in and, and push your level back up too. If, if you know. But yes, it's it, it's 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 and it's and as Kevin said, it's fine. It became part of the show, is what he told me. It's, oh, it's just yeah. fine. It became part of the show. Well, that's his philosophy on everything, and I kind of understand it too. Now it's like you know what? No matter how bad things get, I have got a podcast story out of this. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> well, and and so it was interesting because I I uh, I took my um my uh, friend who lives here in Cache Valley. It's a filmmaker, um because I hadn't shot with this particular camera only a handful of times, and it's got some pretty uh, funky settings. As anyone who shot with a, a Sony, um and I'm just I normally shoot with Canon, so it was it was I didn't know it that well, so I brought him along with me. And uh, he he was able to get a great picture out of it and everything. Uh, but but we were speculating, so like. So for this second show, um, are they just I mean, they're just going to, you know, take the the best of 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 both recordings because, you know, there's no way that they can come up with all with a whole new content in the next day that that's relevant and topical and and everything else. And then we come to find out that, you know, as as Kevin was out uh, uh, getting stoned and going to uh, uh, Target, uh, Ralph. Oh, and also watched uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, Ralph stayed home and or stayed in the hotel and and came up with a whole new show like it blew my mind um that they can come up or that ralph can come up with in a day's turnaround uh an hour and a, and a half's worth of content like that's that that's that's so well just like segmented and thought out and and damn <laughs> yeah yeah, you know, I, I, I agree. Uh, that is one thing, though, that's kind of nice with his uh, having the Ralph Report, which you can find out more at, at theralphreport.com, um, is that a lot of that can be content uh, testing for the for Babel uh, because totally, he's doing yeah. daily news, daily birthdays, and the like, uh, all these wonderful bits. Uh, so some of that helps, but you know, not not all the time, not all of it. And in that case, with two days so tight together, 
thankfully they do have like the email and the shout out sections because that right. way that makes it very easy to uh, to uh, make unique content at the front end of the show at least you know what I mean yeah and it's it's interesting too because that's the, I, I, that that embodies a uh, an element that that Kevin works into his shows a lot too I think um, uh, when when he came and, and you came and, and Jay came to uh, Logan to do that show um Kevin was like really focused on well you know uh these guys paid to be here let's let's talk about what they want to talk about um and so that's why the <laughs> shout outs are so great yeah exactly that was a that was a big lesson learned right there you know it's like oh my god because I was when we were doing that I was I was sweating I was like oh my god what are we gonna do for an entire show what oh, are we gonna yeah. do but uh, yeah. no it turns out all you got to do is play the netheads intro uh then start fielding some questions and then play the outro and you're done just that easy. And then, uh, yeah, and two hours has gone by very quickly. Yeah, uh, unlike when it's just you and I sitting in the comfort of our homes and we can't even come up with enough content for five minutes. <laughs> so that's always fun. We know that we know that's not the case. Well, I hope so. Um, by the way, I mentioned it last week, so I just gotta I gotta give a plug for it again because if anybody uses like uh, OBS, the uh, Open Broadcast uh, Suite or software or whatever the name of it is. Uh, you got to get one of these stream deck thingies. Oh, shit. No, I just oh. dropped it. Probably stopped the stream. I just blew everything up. Here, let me tap yeah, back I, over like, real quick. Like it's, nope, it's, it's all still super, running. Here we go. It's super interesting to me that like that is not a, a sponsored ad for every single Twitch viewer. Yeah, I, I, I'm amazed because it is a very small investment to be able to have a tactile switching service that as long as you've done your homework, right? Uh, you can definitely, what's funny is I switched to the we'll be back soon graphic right there. Uh, oh, nice, I'll, nice, nice. Uh, anyway, um, it accidentally when I dropped it. Um, but the nice thing, like I said, is you can also customize it. You never really got to see it because I dropped everything, but you know, each one of the buttons has got a, a picture behind it. So I don't even need to be smart in order to do this. Right. I can just like, oh, I need to switch to Trent. I press your face. That's what Done. I do. I press Done. your face, Trent. Now I'm well, pressing mine and I'm back. Hello. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, I just got to say, if you don't have one of these and you do use uh, OBS, it's great. Like, including I can I can hit one button to start our stream. I can also now I don't know if you notice you don't even need to tweet that we are uh, live because yeah, uh, I'm just able to press a button and va va boom, there it is. Yeah, it just populates right up. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, it is it is a great thing. Everyone else is just like, well, I've heard of macro keyboards before, or keypads, and yeah, it's the same thing. But, but yeah, this one, yeah. but this one, the software actually works hand in hand with like totally. OBS. So when you're, like, you don't need to be smart to program these buttons either, folks. So that's the important thing. Which, by well, the way, I, go ahead, you finish your thought. Well, I'm just saying, uh, you know, how, how many times have have you and I had this problem where um, you've got these these uh, macro uh, shortcuts programmed. But then it, you know, you're you're in the middle of the show and you're and you're halfway through it, or and you need to push something, and then you hit the wrong macro. It's just so much easier to have a solid button push right there. It's it's the same reason that samplers do it the same way with just these big keypads that do one function per button. Um, because when you're on the fly, you can't be thinking, okay, so it's Control Shift F two, and then the other one uh, for the outro is uh, Shift Control. F, you know what I mean? It just it's different. It's yeah, easier. yeah, it's it's uh it it is a lot easier. As a matter of fact, I have to be honest, man. I was I I have some things here, so I like might be unloading some HDMI to SDI converters. You know, I was I was gearing towards doing something really stupid, which was taking my old uh Play Trinity, which was upgraded to a Globecaster. Sure. And, and using that, but that what would that mean? Would mean is all of our video would have to be dumped down to non HD at 480p and then upscaled in there. And it was only because it had all these nifty features, and I had the the keys mapped perfectly from back in the day, so I could very easily do this. But now I, I don't need it. And and with what I've learned in OBS, uh, you know, it's like it. it it's amazing how much software has replaced hardware. Like I'm, I'm seriously, it's like uh, that, that, that old, uh, that old Trinity, she may be a beautiful blue box, but she got right now she's holding up a, uh, a, a bar top arcade <laughs> and that's probably the maximum it's ever going to do now. But, but at, at, you know, at its time, that was the end all be all right of, 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 uh, streaming, uh, media. 
Well, it was for us to be able to do what we were doing at the time. Yeah, definitely. It was, uh, you know, it was a very easy interface. It was a full broadcast switcher. It was it was just wonderful. Oh, hey, Libra Velasquez joining us on the uh, Facebooks as well. That's nice. Uh, and we got a tech question from longtime listener Carrie Lynn. Uh, she asks, uh, Oculus Go, yay or nay? I'd be using it for viewing movies with a friend out of state, not gaming. Um, I'm not familiar with the Oculus Go. I do know that the Samsung VR is extremely affordable right now. Uh, right before Christmas, you could pick it up for super cheap. Um, and and for something like that, if you're just watching movies on it, I don't think it really matters um, the brand or the model or whatever, just as long as it has the VR capabilities for movies. It's not going to need the process, uh, the the image processing power um, that you would need for gaming. What he said. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a mic malfunction right there. Yeah, so I, 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 if you, if, if that's what you're using it for to watch movies, um, I don't think it really matters as long as it'll do it in, in, in whatever, um, uh, DPI that you want it in. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I, dude, you man, don't do just, DP in the eye. You never mind. <laughs> Sorry, but with glasses, man, I I don't do VR. I'll never do VR because I wear glasses. It's just not going to happen. It's not in my wheelhouse. I understand completely, but you have to admit that the commercials with uh, Jonah, uh, what's his last name? Hex. No, 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 <laughs> no. The actor from Superbad. Oh, Superbad. Hill. Superbad. Yeah, Jonah Hill and um, I, the lead singer of Maroon Five, who's on The Voice. Oh, why can't I ever remember uh, the names? Uh, Adam Levine, thank you. Levine, they're watching like basketball games and movies together because they're just oh, okay. sitting in a in a in a shared. Which I would love. Like that's the reason why I could get into VR. If you were totally. capable of seeing it, then it's like, oh hey, I could watch him. I mean, I should be watching a movie with my wife. But I'm saying, like, if she weren't home, <laughs> I could right, be watching exactly. a movie with you, or, right? Or she had already gone to bed and you're staying up late or whatever. Or even if you want to watch television just by yourself uh, in your bedroom. Oh. You could probably I didn't do think that about too. that, and it would keep the light out from from a, a loved one who's sharing the. Okay, okay. Oh, buddy. and there's the loved one right there. Okay. Hey, hey, Mister, okay. how are you? Okay. Oh, off. Is this Lurch. Lurch? Off. Yeah. Okay. Has he just knocked off my keyboard? Oh, that's funny. That, that was. I, I apologize. No, about it's okay. That. It's okay. People, uh, people are wanting to to know about the dogs. They want to have our pup dates. You know. Uh. It, it it's it's interesting. I would like to know, uh, Carrie, what Carrie Lynn, what you're using for uh, your uh, how are you watching the movies? Uh, because you know, uh, an old time, old time, you know, a few, you know, a few years back tradition of uh, netheads. Uh, I did the uh, annual uh, viewing on the Xbox 360 when you could share. Someone would rent a movie and then you could share it with all of your friends in your friend group and you could all watch it together, uh, and then you could chat. Uh, over the 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 comm system, uh, thanks killing. We would do that at, uh, like three years in a row until uh, Xbox uh, took that feature away. You can no longer uh, share movies with people and watch it uh, live at the same time. Yeah, which uh, which is kind of a bummer. But I wonder if uh, since uh, PlayStation is owned by Sony, I wonder if they would have that kind of thing. Uh, these I, are the questions I, would think, yeah. I have to ask. We'll get to that in a second, though. Uh, Dylan is pointing out, by the way, that the uh, the Choose your own adventure, uh, Black Mirror movie Bandersnatch doesn't uh, work effectively on Apple TV. It's a nice service announcement. Oh, Thank really? You, Dylan. Yeah, I, I'm I'm interested to check that out, but it's not something I wanted to discuss because I haven't yet. I already feel like I'm left out because all of social media is talking about Blind Spot, and I have no interest in watching it. Or Bird Box. Sure. Pardon me, not Blind Spot. Bird Box. That's okay. what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, of. yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah, ditto. I I I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I haven't talked to anyone. Um, that I uh, could take a, uh, I don't know, like crib off of their review of it yet. So we'll see. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I'll uh, tell you what I have watched recently, though, Will. Oh, yeah? Uh, uh, I'm now a subscriber of uh, the DC Universe. Oh, Unlimited. oh, you are. And holy shazbot, my friend, Titans is something else. 
Oh, interesting. That's good to know. I I, did, I was is, not aware of that at all. It is. It is. Yes. And and you know. Uh, and it's been reported that they've got all these plans for these uh, other live action shows that they're going to do. A Star Girl, a Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol is introduced in one of uh, the the Titans episodes, and it's kind of a heart wrencher, and and really makes you uh, makes you just kind of uh, feel for these these characters. Oh, who wrote it? That's right. Paul Effendini. Of course he did. Oh, really? I, that I didn't know about. Yeah, n- neither did I. And it, I just, I always pay attention because, you know, whenever you can see a, a comic book writer, and there were a few of the the Netflix episodes of uh, the superhero stuff that, that were comic book writers. And at the end of that episode, written by Paul Dini, I'm like, of oh, freaking course, it was written by Paul Dini, which then just sent me down like a, a rabbit hole uh, at work this week uh, where I went back and listened to uh, the, uh, the Paul Dini episodes of Fat Man on Batman. Which are so good, uh, and because uh, the 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 last two episodes he did with Paul Dini are commentaries on his uh, episodes, a couple of his episodes, which are all available on the uh, uh, DC Unlimited. Oh wow! Well, that's very cool. A, a caveat to Titans, uh, not kid friendly in the least bit. No, I think I I think I got the clue on that one when they pointed out that the. Uh, there was the whole fuck Batman thing, if I may. Yes, in the yep, yeah. If in, I may in, mention in like the that. opening scene, yes, yeah. But it, it was interesting because at, and I think it, I think as the episodes were were developed, it kind of found its pace with profanity. Um, the the first couple of times you you hear uh, an f bomb or whatever, you're you're like, huh, I mean, I'm not offended by it, but it just feels weird in a superhero movie. But I think, you know, by the last, you know, four or five episodes, there's only 11 episodes this season. Um, it really got like a feeling where it became just part of the vernacular and the writing was was smooth to where it didn't feel like they were having to work and to show how edgy we were. It was just part of the dialogue. I feel like uh, my only comparison I can do for this is the uh, the Star Trek Discovery uh, that runs on the CBS All Access, right? Right, yeah. A- and I have to admit that there the – um the for me it was like the first time one of the characters said shit i'm like what whoa hold on guys right yeah what what are you, what are you saying here what are you talking about now there's no profanity in starfleet oh yes yes there is trent yes there is <laughs> there is profanity in starfleet well you know it, it it's the whole retconning thing that and that's what that the weird line those shows have to walk i feel bad oh, for them gosh. because you know you kind yeah. of you're stuck with all of this uh, essentially what we would just call canon right Right. And yep. and then uh, from there, you've also you're also living in a world where you're no longer. Um, how does one say this? Uh, your technology is way far more advanced than the shit they had in the 60s. Right. So in that case, what are you going to do? There's very little else you can do except just uh, throw in the towel and. And say, all right, well, that look, the tech back then was old, and the stuff we've got now is just a lot newer and cooler. People aren't gonna, they're not gonna put up with cardboard boxes painted as gray things, right? Right. So yeah. So I, I feel bad for them, but but they've done a great job. But it, it, still, it was like the moment they swore, I was like, what, what's that? It was kind of, I was kind of like uh, one of them. Uh, <coughs> it was like a dog heard a unique noise. I was like, huh? Turn, huh? turn in my huh? head. What the hell was yeah, that? Yeah, you're like, it should come out as fork, right? Yeah, this that, is a good place. Yes, that's just what I don't understand. Yeah. Oh, by the way, too, are you caught up on that? I am, and uh, gosh, I hate I hate holiday breaks for television. <laughs> <laughs> ever, ever, like the past three weeks, I'm like, okay, maybe there's a new one. Ah, damn it. <laughs> uh, that 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 that's a negatory, sir. No, I'm sorry. That is a negatory. Uh, that is still uh gonna not uh let you do that dance if you will yeah Um, you're Mm -hmm. you're gonna be Mm -hmm. stuck watching uh absolutely nothing until and and here's the real bitch of it right um the good place is gone when it comes back there's only three episodes left yeah i know right see and that's why i was wondering if if you know as 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 uh as uh kirsten or kristen bell has has a 13 episode contract per season if they couldn't do more um a bottle episode almost like like where the the group splits off or uh uh everyone is janet for an episode uh because you know she was in that episode still a minimal part and that's that's an episode that's that's one of the ones you could you you used for her uh contract what are you talking about which one 
minimal uh, the use. Episode- Oh, okay, the, the, gotcha. Yeah, the yeah. the episode like uh, two before the, that one where yes, it, I mean it's it's hard to call it a bottle episode because they're going back on right. the the courtyard set. They had all those kind the, of animals, but yeah, the first the first act is 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 bottled. But but if they had they done you know everything just in that one realm as the Janets, then then you could get maybe fourteen episodes out of a season. Yeah, well, actually, her contract is it's a maximum of sixteen. Uh, oh, is on, it? Yeah. So they uh, they get to uh, they could at least do that many, but they're they're sticking with thirteen because you know, like, why three more? That's the model. Yeah, and not to mention they're also uh, they're good to go uh, renewed until next year, I believe. Uh, they're, nice. Season four got a pickup already, so good. It's kind of a, a non-issue uh, in that respect. So Trent. Uh, what did you think of that episode, though? When it, it hey, spoilers, five, four, three. They end up in the, they actually end up in the good place. And by the way, yeah. it's been confirmed that's not malarkey. They really are. Yeah, I just it's, said it's malarkey. It's the actual good place. It's, it's, it's not like, yeah. It's not like that fake good place. <laughs> it's, it's, it, yeah, it's not, the, uh, it's not a good place that's actually a bad place disguised as a good place. That's really the bad place, right? Uh, but that was uh, that was interesting, and uh, I don't I don't know where they're going with this season, but I I like what they're throwing down. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay with it. I also it's, it's, go ahead. It's been interesting. I just I I I feel like people who have uh, um, jumped in and not followed the show episodically since its beginning have less affinity for it than those of us who have been with it since the beginning. I uh, I saw someone saying like I don't. This isn't that big of a deal. They've watched it all within like three weeks versus us who, you know, spent that whole first season with with the mind F at the end being like, oh, what? <laughs> but that's what's going to happen. That's the thing. And I don't know why I didn't notice this, Trent. OK, I really don't know why I didn't notice this. I really should have noticed this. Um, every single uh, episode of The Good Place ends uh it's it's always a cliffhanger there's always something it's always something that's supposed to be uh, a cliffhanger to get us to want to come back to the to next come back. episode sure. yeah uh, part of the thing they went with was kind of a sort of a just a little bit of a lost model and it it took me listening to the good place the podcast to even pick up on that detail make me Which feel pretty fantastic. stupid if you're a fan of the show, uh, you, you should definitely be listening to the podcast. It's great. Uh, I completely agree. And Trent, I have to admit, I have not cut it yet, but I have in my email for us to use is a bumper by Mark Evan Jackson, who plays Sean, saying, ah. hey, uh, this is Mark Evan Jackson from everywhere, and you're listening to NetHeads. Nice. Yeah, so. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. I'll have to incorporate that as soon as I can, but uh, but uh, that was uh, that was kind of a thrill for me uh, to to get that. So and, yeah. and just the exchange leading up to it too. I I think he is a genuinely nice guy, especially based on uh, the things because there are elements of the podcast where like he'll always ask people, um, you know, what's good. So in other words, you know, tell me your idea of something that's good. And then he also wraps every episode saying, now go do something good. I'm like, wow, there's a guy that's that's using a platform. Because you got to think about it. This is for an NBC show, which right. clearly is popular. Last year at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, they were not in Hall Age. I would predict this coming year they will be in Hall Age. That's yeah. my prediction now with yeah, the, with the level so. of attention this show has gotten. I, yeah. I mean, I was honestly, I was shocked to see an installation outside of uh the 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 con that was dedicated to the good place and and granted they didn't really put and i'm not meaning this in a shitty way uh they didn't really put a lot into it because basically it was like a a facade and then just like a courtyard that was was decorated and customized on the inside and then everybody that was let in would go through a certain experience and then they you would get escorted out but the cool thing that you also got which were the executive pins if you attended so i really wish i'd right. gotten into that but i was shocked to see the installation honestly i because up until that point i just thought oh this is a quirky show like my friend trent and i like and you know yeah, i don't know right. how many other people are watching are it. actually watching it right yeah this this is this is going to be end up like um last man on earth and, and you know ha- have this great cliffhanger that we'll never get to see the end of oh i can't stand that but you know uh, certain networks they they seem lately with the fandom they tr- seem to try and 
do some good there. Uh, like I think on the 21st of this month, uh, there was a what essentially was two more episodes of Timeless that were kind of melded together to be this final Timeless. So to to allow the story to end. Yeah, which I thought was nice of NBC to do, especially I, I you know you're talking about dead air season right now. Everything is just uh, dead. No one gives a squat, right? Well, and it's it's so interesting. Like like um for for as much as uh, Netflix is green lighting which apparently is everything as as many popular uh, uh, sketches and and co- comedy uh, routines have have been speculating um how how like to me that's a no brainer you just pick up anything that's been canceled that has a large fan base a la uh, lucifer right and you're already bringing this uh this huge fan base behind you um that that's guaranteed subscribers right like to to me that's a no-brainer yeah especially when you're some type of model that is in no way shape or form like one of the major four broadcast networks you're not exactly you're not not even competing with cable numbers because you're in your own realm now it doesn't matter uh and you know in some cases that works like i think uh the mindy project got another season uh because it was picked up by somebody so we're seeing this more and more it's considered a hulu original now yeah, baby. Um, so we're seeing this more and more, and in some cases it works out nice. I just know sometimes when things move networks, it's not so nice. Kind of like right. when uh, in the 90s, I think it was the 90s. No, maybe it wasn't. It was the 2000s. Uh, but in there the was the, there was a... So glad you did that. Um, there was the TV show Sliders, and when that moved oh, yeah. over to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to si- Sci-Fi, it, yeah, it, Sci-Fi. It, it, yeah. It, it, that, that didn't go well at no. all. It, it didn't. That was, was un- so, but I, but you know, I don't have any fear of Brooklyn Nine Nine going from Fox to NBC, right? As a matter of fact, I think uh, it, it's almost kind of fit because isn't uh, isn't Brooklyn Nine Nine also a Michael Schur uh, project production? Uh, it, I'm I think not it sure. is. I think it, would it make is. sense. Yeah, I definitely think it is. And uh, it, you know, in that case, I uh, I'd be I'd be I don't I don't I don't think we're going to see any issues there. Uh, but you know what, Trent? Screw all this TV stuff. Uh, now. Yeah. Uh, although I I do have to say as well that you know, like we have said before, and especially now without new shows being on, this is definitely they're 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 banking on the binging season. I'm surprised we just don't see more original programming from netflix and and like dropping around this time and i mean like everything like you know it's like we're also going to drop daredevil because they don't have to worry about counter programming at all because exactly it's their own network it's their own realm and people can still get to things yep which which again which uh is is why this uh it, it just makes sense for titans that they can take more chances with it um because it's it's just their uh their production right and and they own all the rights to it and it can live on their platform indefinitely um so yeah it, why why would you ever make you know knowing what we know now why would you ever put money uh or, or create something for someone else to make money when you can have it just make money for you the whole time so so as 2019 rolls around and, and we get the the marvel uh star wars disney uh streaming conglomerate app or whatever it's going to be called um it just makes sense to cancel any further development elsewhere um abc is a little different because it's part of the company um (laughs) but 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 it just makes sense can i just tell you the funniest thing out of all of this uh to me is that people have been going on you know about the cancellation of the daredevils and the like yeah and and they're and they're saying you know like oh well the likelihood of it coming there isn't very high because they have to wait two years Guys, this is Disney <laughs> slash Marvel, okay? Did y'all forget that we have been waiting years for the Avengers Infinity War movie? We've known yeah. it's been coming. They are, yeah. They're in it for the long game. Not yep, to mention, totally. I'm sure it's not a lot of money to keep Charlie Cox under retainer. It's just like, yep. you know, hey, uh, they may have canceled you, but, uh, you know, come on down, buddy. Make sure you sign here. We got this truckload of cash. Uh, exactly. We just need to make sure that two years from now you're still down with the underground, and yep. uh, and and it'll happen. So that part cracked me up. It's like okay, so there's gonna be a two year time span until that big deal, and and that's Yippee. the reason. And that's the reason why that would be the only reason why Netflix would be an absolute 
dick is if they right. if they said, oh, Jessica Jones. Yeah, we're keeping that one, you know, because now well, you're oh, pulling her yeah. out of the defenders. Yeah, right. Yeah. That'd be some yeah, nasty or, ass kind or, of programming. Or, or, you know, who knows? We've we've seen three Hulks. Uh, we, we maybe they'll just cast new people and, and just go in stride picking up off the story. Like I, the fact that we get these things at all. Is mind blowing, right? We're getting, we're getting a Doom Patrol <laughs> live action series. Like, what? <laughs> Dude, we got an Aquaman movie. R- the, Not only uh, that, Trent. <laughs> <coughs> aside from a slightly long runtime, we got a good Aquaman yeah, movie. Yeah, a box well, office hit. I, th- the wife and I went to go see it. Yeah, well, actually. Uh, Emily did too. Um, we went to go see it yesterday, and I have to, it. Look, if nothing else, I will say this, folks: it ticks off all of the boxes. They've got him uh, carrying on exactly how you want him to, not sure. quite as much as the man from Justice yeah. League side of him, but right, you know, right. but they but they're delivering on all of the uh, on all the beats. And I remember uh, on the IMDb boat, James Wan uh, talking about it, and. And uh, they were talking about the, I think the trailer at the time, or or they were talking about some of the imagery we'd already seen. And they're like, I saw them, you know, like riding a gigantic seahorse, just like we used to see at the beginning of the uh, Super Friends uh, cartoon. Super Friends, yeah, uh huh. When uh, when he's riding, <laughs> and dude, they it, it, James Wan said at one point, this is what I was getting at. He's just like at some. point, at one point you have to realize there's all this out there and you just need to embrace it and figure yep. out a way because oh, because yep. literally dude he's got the rings when he's talking to the fish oh nice there are there is a form of those and the reason for the yellow and green pants it, it's introduced and and it and it plays because of uh what they establish in there the only thing you know you get you know, some nerds will probably lose their shit because of the continuity aspect of things. You don't have, right. you know, uh, it's like, well, why? My, like Denise even said, because we came back and I'm like, well, yeah, you remember Justice League? Uh, and we put it on and she's instantly like, why are his eyes white instead of yellow? Right? I don't know. Because uh, cause, cause Zack Snyder had a, a, a vision. <laughs> and then, by the way, too, I think it was recently, <laughs> not to not to be too pedantic trend sure uh, but i find this interesting that uh the originally i think it was recently the uh, the director of suicide squad or one of the writers or somebody they basically said that dc made them change the narrative and it's oh, a yeah. shame because when they did that i think they did break up some decent continuity because it was supposed to be that and you could okay let me put it this way batman versus superman i don't think you've seen it yet right no no absolutely not so one of the things that's alluded to at the end uh, when Lex Luthor is seeming crazy is that uh, that it's possible that Steppenwolf, and they even had a, a cut Steppenwolf scene. What? That that Steppenwolf was somehow influencing uh, Lex Luthor, right? So that was okay. that's what I got out of it anyway. And now we find out, too, that the original concept for Suicide Squad was that Enchantress was also being influenced or swayed by Steppenwolf. Yeah, and uh, and somehow uh, one of them has a mother box, and that's how Star Labs ends up getting a mother box. Oh, I mean, okay. it's the one thing that kind of would have taken us into Justice League with this kind of right. similar thing that carries through. But you know, for some reason, they decided to abandon it. Um, I, I think it would have made for a better story, though. I at least seeing all those things going continuously. You know, I, in the end, I think Justice League was able to do what they did with what they had, and you know, they brought in uh, Joss to try and polish it up. And by the way, when you watch that movie, you can tell every one of those inserts because it's like a that uh, Whedon did. Mm-hmm. Because I'm yeah. convinced ninety percent of them were just witty comments. Because they are literally, it, it's always, it, all the really good quips, it's just a single shot of a character in the area. Nobody's yeah, yeah, standing yeah. next to them. Not yep, a one. Totally. So yeah. you can tell, that was just dropped in. Okay, neither here nor there. Didn't want to talk about all the TV stuff. Um, but uh, but, <laughs> but now I kind of want to. No, Trent, I for Christmas, I now have a PS4. 
Oh! Because, you know, as an adult, uh, by the way, Reboot Sense is telling us on Twitter, love listening to the lads live. Also, uh, Trent, love seeing the dogs fighting in the background. So, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. So, sorry about that. <laughs> no, you got a full you got full activity going on. It's all right, man. Um, but I have a PS4 now, but I, I will let you know I did not spend my entire vacation playing uh, Spider-Man. I have spent quite a few hours. Okay, good, good. Amazing game. I can tell why people love it. As a matter of fact, uh, I think it was Mark Bernardin who even said it. The best part of the game is just uh, web swinging around the city, and it's true because yeah. it's like uh, yesterday I ended up dropping out again because it's like, oh, it, it's another uh, a gauntlet of having to get through a bunch of henchmen to, uh, to get to a boss or to get to end of the segment it's it, it's just like in a, i mean i see a lot of the echoes that i also saw in the arkham games it's like okay here we go it's another batman hanging around on the uh gargoyle statue scene where right. we're having to do yeah, yeah, yeah same kind of thing uh but but the, when you're just tooling around the city and you're doing the side quests and everything else oh the game is just incredible and they, they did such a wonderful job of making web slinging very intuitive once you understand the mechanics of it it is just so quick and easy to go yeah, yeah, yeah. through and just uh, go whipping around the city. You know, next thing I know, I'm not only am I swinging, uh, I can get velocity going, but I also can hang a good hook and go completely over a building. And and I'm just like, if this were VR, my mind would melt. Just yeah, they've had they've 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 had some some room to develop. You know, um, there was uh, Edge of Time and Shattered Dimensions, uh, both really good uh, Spider-Man games. Uh, and the uh, games of Spider-Man uh, that people, um, you know, were were at the time were amazed at how good the 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 web swinging around the city was then. So I can only imagine it's it's been improved upon from there. Yeah, it's it, it is it is very very choice. Um, if Sony had just you know pulled their head out of their ass and be like, hey, we could make more money if we would just put this out on multiple platforms now, huh? You know what? I, how much you want to? I, I bet they would do at least a PC. Yeah, um, they port, will. They like will. after a year or something. Yeah, they will. Because they really need something. I mean, look, it worked. Um, my daughter even knows a lot of people that were getting PS4s for Christmas this year. So, and I don't. Yeah, I'm like yeah. me buying a gaming system is stupid. That's why I put it off for months and months. So that way it could just be a ridiculous ask on a Christmas wish sure, list. Sure, sure, sure. Instead of you know just like oh okay well I'll just buy a PS4 and then you know uh, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me I um I still feel stupid as a 47 year old guy. You know, um, <laughs> having not only asking, but getting a PS4 for Christmas. But then you're swinging around the city and you feel like uh, you feel like you're alive again, Trent. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you feel like you're Peter Parker. Yeah, pretty much. Yes, I do. Speaking of which, uh, I got to tell you, I had a, uh, a quick uh, business trip, if you will, uh, over the past couple days. And uh, when I did. I, I look, I was expecting to fly down to LA and to do a day's worth of work, you know, to get some stuff going. And I did. Uh, and I spent it exactly the amount of time where I thought I would. Um, and, and mind you, I don't I don't ask for things, Trent. I don't yeah. do that. You know, I don't I don't really ask for, you know, if I see a cool product that's being offered, it's not like I ask for one of them. You know, I've I've to date I've never asked Kevin for one of his jerseys, uh yeah. hockey sweaters. Um Yeah. And just because that's, I'm not a nudge, right? Yeah. But uh, on my trip down, there were two objectives. One, to do a little tuning in Kevin's studio. And the other was to uh, get Jason's uh, gaming setup a little more uh, dialed in. And like now, sure. like if you had watched his Facebook videos before, his live streams, uh, you know, he'd usually have some type of background behind him. Now he is just like every other gamer. He's green screen, chroma key yep. into the environment. It's all working exactly the way it should, and it's real nice. Uh, but when I got there, you know, that was a lot of tuning. And the other thing, too, is he's like, I, I need to get rid of some stuff. I need to clear some things out. He's got all of these gorgeous uh, Legos built, but he wants yes. to be able to uh, have them out and organize more. And, and you know, there's more stuff than there is space is what it was. And it was just so funny because he's like, I don't know what – I'm just going to – I'm going to have to get rid of some of this stuff. And he's like, I'm, we're getting rid of this. We're getting rid of this. And then I look down – at, at like one of the shelves as he's moving some things and I'm like, oh my God, is that a, a toy version of the Batman animated series Batmobile? Oh, he's like Batmobile. And he's like, yeah, it is, man. He is. It even has lights and it turns on. Um, oh wait, it's right here now because 
I won't ask for it, but if you tell me, you ask me if I want it, and I tell you no two times, and you get to a third, I'm yeah, then, I'm taking yes. it. Yeah, look yeah. At, look at that. It, That's the, so badass. And it is. I mean, like for me, much in the. It's probably because of the connection with like Kevin Conroy to me. That is the voice of Batman. Oh, no d- matter and, what, right? And and uh, Mark Hamill is the Joker. Yeah, it, it, they are. Those are those characters to me. But for me, like for my money, the uh, the uh, animated series Batmobile it is just that to me is a quintessential Batmobile because it's yeah. like exactly what it looks like it should be a high yeah. horsepower, very streamlined virtual tank. Yep. And and, uh, and so and and, and and follows the perfect uh, Art Deco uh, aesthetic of BTAS. Yep, definitely. And that's the reason why. I'm probably going to be spending New Year's Day building shelves behind me, so I have a place to put that. As um, John Hodgman says, the difference between a hoarder and a collector is a display case. Very true. Very true. And uh, so then uh, I go to Kevin's studio. Now, his office, if you've seen Man Caves, it's divided. There is basically an office recording studio area right. that's separated by a diagonal wall, and then there is like an office office area. Okay, it's got a couch and other stuff in it. But when I came walking in, man, it's just got it's a gigantic sea uh, of of hockey sweaters. You know, all of them in in the the uh red, white and black. Yeah. Right? Uh, the, the 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 Blackhawks colors. Exactly. That whole motif. And and you know, I I come in, I'm like, god, oh my, that's a lot of them, man. And I know what's happening. You know, he's signing them and then they're going to sell them for charity for the Wayne yeah. Foundation. Um so I, I'm not, and I, I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, my God, that's a lot of jerseys. And then I go in and I do my work and then he comes in, we talk a little business and I'm like, I'm getting ready to leave. And he's just like, I'd be remiss if I didn't offer you, man. There are so many just reach in and grab one grab bag style, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. blind claw. And I'm like, no, no, really. I couldn't. He's like, no, really, seriously, go ahead. You know, if it's a matter of you not having space because you're flying back, I'll ship it to you. Don't worry. Um, okay, that time it only took two, because come yeah, yeah. on, right? Because <laughs> mind you, these are game-worn ones. These are, these are, okay, now I'm just making it sound creepy. that it's. <laughs> but, you know, hey, I bought your t-shirt, t-shirt so yeah. this was a conditioner for me. I'm like, okay, yeah. I can handle owning another man's clothing. Someone's, uh, someone else's stuff. Yeah, well, not just that, but I mean, something another guy has worn. You know, not, the, yeah. not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, no, it just, of course not. It just seems kind of weird. And, you know, not to mention, Trent, it, it, like I said in, I, I shared this on social media already. And like I said in the post, you know, it's like there, there's a fine line I feel that I walk because I do truly still admire Kevin Smith. I am a fan of Kevin Smith, but I'm sure. also uh, a colleague in some ways now uh, yeah. with him. So, you know, it's not like. You know, I'm not going to show up to his house wearing a Blackhawks colored nope. jersey. That would probably look, you know, not bueno. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to. No, it would just, it would just be weird, right? Like, yeah, I mean, like, not that, like, I'm not saying that. Wanna, it, he... <laughs> we're talking, okay, look, I'm saying if you work for the guy, you're getting into single white female um kind of skin suit territory right well and and like he's he's a human being treat him like one yeah exactly you, you know what i mean like 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 uh, the 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 more the, the 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 more i've had chances to meet people who are who have a, a fan base or a following or anything like that the more i recognize their uh their yearning for just normal treatment to just be treated like if you have something you want to say um just say it just be nice about it just you know hey i you know i really appreciate you doing you know that that one episode of such and such or hey i, I appreciate all your work keep it up you know what i mean yeah. it's 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 the it's the <laughs> the the bukkake of compliments and oh my god blah blah that really i think can frighten people well yeah like well like like in let me name drop again trent because you know why not uh when i was at the at san diego comic-con you know it's like i was i was uh and i've said this before here but you know like one of the people i was near was grant gustin and it's just like all i could just say is hey grant love the show left yeah. it at that that Perfect. was it and i and i yeah. and the same thing i got from carlos uh, the Los on Twitter, uh, uh, he even said too. I said the same thing. He was off the back of the boat, and I'm like, "Hey, Carlos, love the show, man." And he's like, "Thanks, 
really appreciate it. And, and Grant said, hey, man, thanks. So, you know, it's really quick, simple. It's a nice, even exchange, low currency. And mind you, I'm not saying there's anything wrong if you want to pick up a Kevin Smith jersey and, and you want to wear them or you want to feel close to them. It's a totem for you, if you will. It's a great yeah. term, oh, I think. I, I've got so much mod stuff. I would I would feel weird wearing it in Kevin's house. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. But you know, you know, if you're going to a con, like you could totally all you all you need is a glasses and a back, or all you need is your beard and a backwards hat, and you're now cosplaying. Good to go, yeah. Uh, not me. I'm bald. I can. I look like alopecia, <laughs> Kevin Smith. I, you know what I mean. I, I'm now my, the before picture. Choice. I'm now the my before choice. picture of Kevin Smith. <laughs> right. Yeah. I guess. I mean, Pretty no, much. but yes. You're you're a lot taller than Kevin, though. That's mm -hmm. another thing. Every every time I see him in person, I'm I'm just like, oh yeah, he's not like a tall guy. For some reason, just everyone in my mind on television is at least six foot. <laughs> They're all the guy from uh um oh god, I can't remember them. I mean, Roadhouse. I thought you'd be taller. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess that is true. I don't know what it is about seeing them on the television, but you just expect them to, you expect everyone to, like, be, it doesn't matter even if you've seen them standing next to people and they were shorter, because it's like, by that oh. comparison, it's like, okay, well, if that's with Kevin's height, then, then Ben Affleck must be 7'2", kind of thing, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and, and Hodor is, like, 10 foot tall, obviously. Actually, he is really tall anyway, dude. I know, I'm just thinking that picture of, of Kevin and he together on the IMDb boat. <laughs> I got to see that being taken. Anyway, um... So to conclude my shitty story really, really fast, uh, he said that. I said, no, no, no. And then I said, okay, sure. And, you know, it's – and really, the way they're folded, it really is like a grab bag. You don't know which one is which. You just know it's yeah, a yeah. jersey. And I reach in, and the first one I pulled out, I was excited about because it was the IMDB crest. And I'm like, I got to go on nice. the boat. I got the captain's hat now. This is yeah, dope. Yeah. You know, I've got the full, full Monty here, if you will. And it was just so funny. His reaction is like, oh, no, man, go again. <laughs> He's like, I got, don't worry <laughs> about it. He was let down by it. Well, in a way, because, you know, it's like, I don't know if there's just like one of each in there or what have you, but he's like, I got like nine of those. Okay, don't worry about it. Go again just and keep them both. And the next yeah, one I yeah. pulled out was uh, like from the dance scene of Clerks as a storyboard. And yes. I'm like, oh, wow. This is, uh, to me, that one was really cool because Clerks was the movie I connected with. Mallrats was actually, totally. uh, it's one that I'm that made me realize, oh, there's some continuity going on here now. Sure. But, you know, Clerks was, was always that really kind of, and I don't know, I know he cast it with his friends, but there's something very familiar about that movie. Like when you see Dante and you see Randall, both characters for me were very familiar because they are literally cut from people in my life, whether they were oh, people absolutely. you saw that looked like that yep. or acted that way. It was very, very grounded uh, and very much within the same wheelhouse, if you will, the, as the people I knew. Um, but when I pulled out, that was really great, too. Now I have the problem of wondering, what do I do with these? Because, uh, right. you know, I even even now, I feel weird, like, wearing them. So what does one do with them? Tack them onto the wall? I don't Man, know. I I, I, uh, yeah, th I, there was a while, I, maybe it's just because I don't have any that fit, but I used to wear hockey jerseys quite a bit. Um, hint, hint. No, now, now I just kind of wear them to, uh, to the hockey games I go to. You don't really need two hockey sweaters, do you, Will? I'm just saying, if you've got a problem with them, <laughs> no, you can send no, one no, to you, Utah. <laughs> no, you definitely, need, you need that, you need, you need more. You need, you need 90 of those things. No, 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 I don't. Uh, actually, the one weird thing, and I don't remember what I ended up getting it for, what I ended up doing to get it, uh, but one of the items, not here in the office, I think it's out in the garage right now, it needs to come back in, it is actually one of the carpeted tiles from Smod Castle. Uh, that's the oh, it's the yeah. same logo as on your he uh, helm, the uh, New Jersey Devils, is that what it is? Yeah, uh-huh. Black Square New Jersey Devils logo and Kevin's signature on it. Um, nice. Yeah, and I'm like, I, I, again, that that one was a big problem of what do you now? What do I do with it? So yeah, because I don't think I would wear them. But uh, but man, that 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 Matt Batmobile for me was exciting. Hey, by the way, last time we talked, it's a good moment to end on. I think uh, last yeah. time we talked, you had been at least seven days into uh, your own personal potato famine, if yep. you will. Uh, but it wasn't because you were eating potatoes. It wasn't a lack of potatoes. So uh, so what was it like? Because your goal, I believe, was to get to Christmas Day 
Yeah. And then, yeah. and then, and then, you know, you were going to have whatever schedule, you know, it was sens- potatoes for breakfast, potatoes for lunch, and then a sensible dinner. Yeah. So, yeah. so and- the question is, did you make it to Christmas? What was real food like again? Well, yeah. well, tell us about it, man. Let us let us yeah. live vicariously through you and your and your potato eating ways. Yeah, uh, made it to Christmas. Um, uh, uh, Christmas uh, meals are are a huge deal in my family. Uh, uh, the the we we focus more on the on the breakfast. Um, and so because uh, we always uh, uh, my mother's of Danish heritage, so we always have Abel skeevers, um, which are like those those little pancake uh, balls. Um, anyway, they're, they're awesome. Oh, I thought there uh, so, was something you get scraped off your foot at the podiatrist's office. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm no, just no, trying to no. look at me. I'm trying to make a joke, but now I'm shitting all over your family history. I'm sorry. I wasn't no, intending to. They're, they're, they're delicious. Uh, anyway, you, you can check them out there. They're, they're, they're a lot of, a lot of, uh, that's a big tradition for a lot of people anyway. So that, that was kind of the only thing that, uh, I was looking forward to. Um, and I, I had some and I had some bacon, which was awesome um with it and then the rest of the day uh my my, my dad always starts like a ham in the mid, uh in the morning so that as you go throughout the day you can cut off a slice of ham and make a little sandwich as you need it and then that's that's what they do for the for the rest of the day um and it was it was perfect because there was no um there the, not only was there no desire to gorge myself but there was no opportunity to it either really you know where, where it's like okay we're gonna sit down and uh we have to eat all of these pizzas we just ordered or or you know here's your plate of all of this no it was just like you know serve yourself for 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 the breakfast and throughout the day we just kind of serve yourself as you go um so it was great it, it was it was great to eat regular food again uh and uh i i felt like i uh i definitely paced myself more too uh i had you know like two sandwiches rather than like four sandwiches just because i ate more slowly um, and now I'm back into the swing of things. Uh, I do uh, breakfast and lunch. And I've never been a big breakfast guy, so it's like you know, just basically snacking throughout the day on potatoes. And then uh, when I get home uh, from work, I just have a regular dinner. And uh, uh, all in all, I've lost 21 pounds so far. Zounds! What pounds, my friend? Good job. Yeah. I yeah. I um once again, of course, turning the conversation to myself. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I know that one thing that happened to me, so I'm interested to hear this about you as well, but after I did my brief stint uh, on just the potatoes, I found that uh, I quickly, I don't know if this is a comment more on how much I eat when I eat or just how my general eating habits were, but I know that by the time I was done, I was I was literally uh, in a situation where I might have uh, something reasonable for breakfast uh, and a cup of coffee. And the next thing you know, I'm not really eating again until dinner because I kind of realized that uh, quite a lot of my eating is is self-serving uh, gluttonous uh, out of reaction and not necessity, I guess is the best sure. way to no, put it. A, a, yeah, absolutely. It's 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 yeah, it's 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 out of, you know, boredom or just, you know, something to pass the time or to chew on or, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like, well, I'm watching TV and there's not a lot going on. I'm now going to stimulate my mouth because uh, what the hell else is there? Right? You know, that's that's actually something that I have. I, I did start doing um, and I've, I've heard things on both sides. Uh, what some there are some people who, who say that chewing gum um, actually will make you hungrier because it's it's creating saliva and it's conditioning your body to eat food. And I've heard other people say that it's a great distraction from eating. I don't know what, what the actual science behind it is, but I've been chewing uh, gum all the time now um, and, and being less hungry, I guess. I don't know, or just not wanting to eat more potatoes. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, but that's and that's the point, too. It really does kind of make you reevaluate your entire relationship totally. with, your, with even your own hunger because you are, at that point, you know, every time you think you're hungry and you know all you're going for is another potato or two, then yeah. you're like, well, am I really hungry? Like, do I really want to get up? And go through the whole rigmarole to have more potatoes right now, or yep, exactly, you know, or am I just looking to eat to eat kind of thing? Yeah, and so that I found that was really helpful. Uh, so, so, I'm, but I'm glad to hear, man. Good job. And the other thing too that you'll find uh, is that you know, unless you just like go on a bender and go nuts, uh, you're pretty much gonna. The other weird thing about this is that it's not weight that you really 
quickly put back on. It's not like there's right, an, yeah, that typical that, yeah. dietary rebound thing. You've actually right. somehow gone through a clean uh, fat burning process, even though it was a little slightly rapid. And and you uh, you're not gonna like jump back because now like you and maybe it's because of that discipline of oh it's just another potato now I don't know yeah 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 I don't know I don't know either I, um uh yeah the I, honestly I think the only weight that 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 kind of regulated out was probably water weight from eating salty foods uh for you know having salt again in my diet which you know brings more water attention into the body but other than that you know it wasn't like oh my god i gained you know like another four pounds just on one meal or anything like that you know it's it's been consistent i'm glad to hear that man i'm really glad to hear that um how are things going with lurch how is he adjusting how is he lurch is lurch is doing great just big and dumb as ever michael sarah however on on christmas day uh, we had him back on the ranch. He was outside playing and came in kind of limping. He, uh, he split one of his, uh, toenails, um, from stem to stern all the way through the quick, right to the, uh, to the meat itself. So I wrapped it up and then got him into the, to the vet on Thursday. And, uh, they, they did a, a minor surgery where they, they knocked him out and, uh, clipped it all the way out of the meat and he said, you know, with time, it'll it'll grow back. So just uh, just keep an eye on it. Wow, man. I'm sorry to hear that. That is. Horrid. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it, it, to, to be honest, I man, my my I, my vet's freaking awesome. I, I uh, boosted uh, Michael Sarah's rabies shots. I got uh, Lurch started on his rabies vaccines and that surgery, which included like the anesthesia and everything. Hundred and thirty bucks. That's that's that actually sounds like you got off light. That's that's what I said. Like like uh, when I was like, okay, uh, what do I owe you? And they're like, one hundred and thirty dollars. I said that there's there is no way that is right. No, I'm sorry, then, you must have that wrong. And then the vet's assistant uh, walked up. She said, no, though, yeah, yep, that's that's it. There, you're you're good to go. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take that. That's fine. <laughs> the, I, th that that or they were just taking pity on me from the uh, thousands of dollars that uh, went to them from Sherman. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, that could that could be it because you know it's like most this of the Christmas, time. Let's cut this guy a break. <laughs> yeah, I literally any time I go to the vet, I fully I I'm like if you get out out uh, under like two hundred fifty dollars. Oh I mean, yeah. I mean that's the reason. Like honest to God, uh, much much in the same way that we are with our own health care. You know the. The cost of pet health care is typically, you know, it's all uh, most people don't have insurance. It's all you're paying out of pocket. And it is amazing how quickly it escalates, uh, even over, like the moment you bring in anesthesia or labs. Exactly. Forget it, man. Yeah, that's that's what blew me away. Had it been just, you know, like cutting it out. But no, they, they knocked him out completely. I'm like, oh, shit, this is going to this is going to cost something. But no, it wasn't that bad. I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, pup dates on this side. Rika is doing well, uh, but you know we are, we're definitely needing. Uh, we're at the point now. He's been with us about two months, and for those that don't remember, this is a dog that was in a. Uh, he was in. They, they describe it as a puppy mill situation, but it was also Ugh. definitely a hoarding situation. Um, so you know, the first year and a half of his life was just spent. Uh, the relationship with food was a dog bag being thrown over the kennel wall. Uh, and I, this one really ripped my heart out during the winter, uh, the curator would put out buckets of water, but you imagine what happens to water in the cold just freezes up. Mm -hmm. And, and so like when it's been raining around here, one of the things we've been seeing Rika do is that he will run around and he like licks the water off of every surface he can just because that's sure, how he got water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. God, man. So uh, so he's kind of, in some ways, he's kind of backslid a little bit. Like, he would go on walks before, and now he doesn't. So, you know, now we're at the point where, you know, we're we're freely admitting we have to engage with a trainer to get him. Because, you know, if there's any one yeah. thing that they always tell you, it's that, you know, pets actually, they thrive off of a regimen and, and the discipline that a regimen can bring. So we need to get into building good habits with him now. I mean, he's got almost everything sure. down. You know, he he asks to go out. He doesn't um, usually have a mistake in the house. Uh, he's he's really good about a lot of things. But still, I am I am the walking uh, yeah. representation you're, of death. In case you're, you're enemy to know. number one, yeah, I really am. I really am. Like my wife will tell me how much fun he has when I leave the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's heartbreaking, man. <laughs> yeah. Like the other day, I like all I did, I think, uh, where did I go? I, I think I went to go pick up Emily. I went to go to, I don't know where the hell I was going. It doesn't matter. I was gone for like 15, 30 minutes at the most. Uh, and
and I go and um, he hadn't been eating much. So the moment I left, he started eating. He starts playing, throwing around toys. And it's always the same thing. I come in the front door and he's like in the middle of the living room now, out of his uh, little hidey space in the dining area. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, he's not in there anymore. And, and he just looks at me and you can just instantly tell. It's like, oh. Ugh, and then he now, goes back now, to the corner. Now I've got this to worry about. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's back. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> So, and, but I feel bad for him because it's just like the only look. I'm not even at the point where I, I'm like I want to be selfish about it. It's like because I realize my desire to hug or pet him or to do anything that's a selfish desire for me to to connect with this animal. Totally. Um. And and so you know it's not benefiting him in any way. So it's like right. oh so what are you gonna do? So it's a matter of, of once I knew that and then I'm like okay he's nice to look at so I'm okay with that. Now I'm just at the point that I wish uh, all the things that I'm doing I could convey to him just that I'm not a threat. You know, you don't look, you don't yeah, have to yeah. come by me, you don't have to let me pet you. I'm all cool with all that, but you just need to yeah. know, dude, I'm not I'm not here to get you. you yeah, you don't need to worry about me. I'm on your team. Yeah, I got I got better things to do, okay? It's all right. You're cool. And you know, that part I hate the most is that I can't convey that because when he goes up to Emily's room, uh he is like a regular dog. He completely yeah does all the wonderful dog things that you want a dog to do. Uh, you know, he yeah. plays with her, lays on her bed, asks to be pet, everything else is when he comes down here. Uh, and, and really, I think that's the other reason, too, why we need to have uh, a trainer and a regular schedule and working with him because um, not only will we, you know, provide him the the regimen that he may need, but also, you know, they people with experience in this will be able to help us to – help him unlearn the year and a half that he had and, and focus now on the life that he does have. Right. Um, but of yeah, course, yeah. the other thing too, that people love to tell you is that, well, you know what he really needs is a helper dog. <laughs> so you get another dog yeah. that is, yeah. that is social and, yep. and reacts to people that looks like him. So he has cues and he can learn from it. Yeah. Um, but this is an ancient breed and a very purebred breed. Right. I mean, yeah. the only reason why we have him is because it was a rescue situation. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Yeah, totally. You know, otherwise, uh -uh. you know, and look, much in the same way, and I don't mean to talk, I'm not talking out of school here, but, you know, much in the same way the dogs you have had, you know, every one of them uh, to some degree, uh, like especially with Sherman, you know, he was a he was a breed. You know what I mean? And oh yeah, yeah. And and if the circumstances had been different, he might not have been living with you, kind of thing. You know what oh, I'm yeah, saying? Oh yeah, totally. Yep. You absolutely. Know, if you're paying breeder price, for example. Oh yeah, there's no way. Say so, same same thing with Lurch too. Like like I've 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 lucked into uh, those two because yeah, uh, especially for a, a Bernie's Mountain Dog man, they are in vogue right now, and you are paying thousands upon thousands of dollars for for a purebred for sure mm -hmm. or 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 when they're not in vogue either or it's a, actually sure or, or it's more to the point if they're a breed and they are and there is a limited supply of quality breeders i guess is the best way to put it yeah and that's kind of i'm sure where we're at yeah no that yep 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 that yeah the yeah the the yeah because you can get them for less but then you're looking running into a lot of genetic problems because of that yeah or like, well, it, you know, I look, I looked up the kennel that he was from, the oh, breeder God. that he was from. Yeah, you sent me that link. It's, ugh. Yeah, but I, I, I looked at, like, when she would run ads, she was, uh, the, the, look, I'm, I'm not trying to talk about it. Like I said, not the same situation. But she was charging 800 whereas other breeders are anywhere from two to 3000 Yeah. So yeah. it's like, you know, it, it, look... Uh, Anytime, if there's anything my yard work, uh, my garage, anything has taught me is that, you know, if you're looking for, if you're excited about a, a less expensive option, there's a reason why it's less expensive. You know, whether you're yeah. putting in the sweat equity because you're trying to avoid uh, paying somebody else to do it, but then you realize you screwed up the job and you should have just let them do it anyway. That's the kind of thing. You, you, if you can get a breed uh, and it's a lot yeah. here and then it's less there, there's a re there's a reason why. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. uh, anyway, I, I don't know. Maybe I can start selling body parts. 
Because, um, you know, <laughs> they don't want just any helper dog. They want it to be another Sammy like him because that way you right. know, he can relate. He sees a it's, dog. It's a direct. Yeah, it, it makes sense, though. Yeah, it told, which was, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I, I uh, wanted to get uh, another dog. Uh, before Michael Sarah started getting too old so that they, he could learn. It, it does make the training process that much easier um, because of it. It's true. Dude, you're not helping my case at all. Sorry. Right now. I know. Just, I apologize. It's okay. It's, I that, appreciate it. There is, there is something to be said about it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, <laughs> uh, just final summation, though. Was it a, was it a decent Christmas? Because I know you don't enjoy going home for the holidays per se. Yeah, no, it, 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 was, a, it was a good Christmas. I'm, I, uh, it, was, it was the the right amount of time. Uh, gotta gotta see some family and stuff, and then uh, come back and and work the the Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday work was amazing because no one was there. Um, so I got a lot done. And by the the last day, I played a lot of uh, Counter Strike when I was literally the only person, not just in my office, not just in my floor, in the building, and perhaps on that half of campus. <laughs> wow. They weren't they, holiday. Well, you know, I'm not surprised though, being that you know it's oh, a yeah, collegiate sure. endeavor. Yeah, I'm sure absolutely. during the holidays it just shuts the hell down, and that's yeah, it. for sure. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm really glad to hear that. I actually I took the last week off. Um, I'm working tomorrow, ha ha. And then, cause come on, it's nobody's gonna be there. No, uh, it's gonna be a, a great day for getting things organized. And it's like, yep, okay, exactly. finally time to clean off that desktop. Time to do this. Time yep. to do that. Um, yep. But I did actually get out and and uh, did a partial some work on, on the shameful mess that is my garage. Uh, so <laughs> and and I've got that to look for, forward to possibly on New Year's Day um, if I don't put in some type of shelves. And I was at, before at first I was by the way. Final note, then we'll really get the hell off the yeah, damn line. Yeah, yeah. When I went down there, uh, Muse had picked up a, a a new desk, a gaming table. A gaming desk is what it was called, right? This yeah. one didn't have cup holders, though. Uh, and I can't remember. It was an, like a Zani Arena uh, arena gaming desk, if you want to see it. Not that I should talk out of school. But, uh, sure. The whole point I'm telling you about this is because it was a decent-sized desk with a little re recess in it. And I think it works out to be that it was 63 inches uh in, in length and it had like a 31 or 32 inch depth so a decent sized desk right yeah but yeah the, but the thing that i love trent this is what enamored me and it turns out that these are the it looks like these are typical of the gaming desk breed it comes with a custom mouse pad that covers the entire desk yeah there are cable organization <laughs> holes and that giant mouse pad has crisscross cuts in it just like your straw lid yep to push right through to it. go right into the organization area <laughs> underneath but it's literally the entire surface and you're just That's like oh awesome. my god it is an entire no slip grip desk and and yeah. it's like i was blown away by it so, uh, and then I started thinking, well, you know, I'm always complaining about the space in my office. Perhaps I should just look into how much MD, because again, oh, look, let's try and save money. Smart idea, Will. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking maybe I could recycle this desk or let's look at getting some MDF because I got plenty of primer, plenty of black paint around here. I yeah, can yeah. easily make a desk, a 20, uh, you know, a sheet of MDF by the time you're out the door around here is 28 bucks. Sure. So let me see what I can do. And I came up with a nice design. Similar size specs, uh, something I could build out very easily, put it together, came in here to measure my desk, right? And I'm just like, wow, I would, I measured it out and I'm like, oh, okay, so I would only be saving about a foot and a half. So, <laughs> but, yeah. but the good news is instead of doing anything, now I'll be able to take some other shelves that were in the garage previously I'm going to shave them in half, and the one thing I'm going to do, because I have a corner desk, but I have these monitor lifts, and i got many monitors, so yeah. I, there's always this back corner that ends up attracting stuff. Because, you know, anytime uh, you've got a surface. Yep. yep. So it attracts stuff. So instead, since I've got so many lap laptops that I use uh, as desktops, there's my my main one, I have a backup one, and then my, my real job one, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of those shelves, shave them in half, uh, and then I'm just going to build a tiny little laptop holder because they all work with their lids Slots. closed. Yep. Yep. Slide them in there, and that way there'll be a fill space for that, and I'll feel a little bit better. Yeah, I hope. No, I. You, you're exactly right. Yeah. In, in fact, I've uh, I've I've actively sought to remove um, uh, plain uh, 
platform places in my house because that's where clutter happens. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. Happen. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, oh, I'll set this here and get to it later. You never get to it later. It just ends up living there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a, there's a little table here that has a laptop on it now. There's another one underneath my desk. This was the impetus for it. The work one is on the <laughs> other one in the corner. There's one over here off to the left. But I've also got a filing cabinet that's underneath my desk. So I don't really need that. I could move the filing cabinet over here if this table weren't here and that were over there. You see what I'm saying, Trent? It all comes yeah. together. Well, I'm he feeling you. Hell, I could probably just build these cheap-ass Target shelves, uh, little stands that I got, into the same thing I'm talking about. Use one of the base. Uh, maybe I should just do that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, the whole point is I got myself out of hot water. But make sure anytime you're looking for new furniture, folks, or you're planning on putting something in, measure out where it's going to go because uh, it's not such a hot idea. I do need to, I don't know what I'm going to do because I like, there's a closet right here to the left that there's one foot of clearance to try and get in. So obviously I got to do something. Maybe that entire right. rounded corner at the end that is an add on that I did. Maybe I should just get rid of that. Let Vector find some other kind of space yeah. instead of just sitting around on my desk. Well, as long as he, as long as he doesn't have feelings about it, you're fine. No, he doesn't. He's a robot, Trent. They don't have well, feelings. He, yeah. he may look like he's emoting, but he has no feelings. <laughs> The weird thing is he does have Alexa integrated in now. So cancel. So now his little face will light up anytime you do that. He just you can't play music through him, but you can still use him to control things and like if you got a smart home or something. It's just weird. It's like if you think about it, it's kind of like a split personality, you know, because yeah. <laughs> it's like you can say hey vector and he'll do something. He, he won't right now, but uh, or you can say, you know, like Alexa, and then he'll wake up to that cancel. And it's just like he, the poor little guy is conflicted now. He, he next thing you know, he's going to be like one of the stars of glass because he's like, oh, and, and here's the vector split personality robot. Oh, I, I, I love the way they did it because it's at least there and, it, and it's clearly dividing the functions. But I still found it just kind of silly that it, it's yeah. either or it's like I would have thought they integrated a little more in there. But uh, anyway, I don't. Nobody wants to hear about my robot. Thank you so much for joining me, Trent. I really appreciate you being there. I always look well, forward to our talks, even though I do most of the talking. And I'm sorry. But... I always look forward to our talks as well. Yeah, it's and therapeutic. And hey, man, Happy New Year! That's part of the reason why we're doing this. That's right. Yeah, to New Year's Eve tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, if you happen to be listening to this and you're in the Los Angeles area and you don't have plans yet, 7.30 p.m. or a 10 p.m. showing, you can go see Hollywood Babylon live. They, I like that. They got the early show in case you want to get home before all the nonsense, and then they yep. got the late show to take you into the new year. And I think you get an exclusive signed poster if you go to the 10 p.m. show. Oh, so. hells yeah. Nice. Yeah, so there's there's some – and we already said about how great of a of a thing it is, you know, to, to see the show live, so uh, – Oh, yeah, I, like – that was a yeah last thing that that was the first time i'd seen a, a babylon show live and i had a whole new appreciation for it even already loving the podcast i i like i i finally get it now it really is a, it's it, it it is an it is an amazing experience to see live i think you know i look i think uh kevin's q and a shows as well are uh, as a matter of yeah, fact totally. they 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 like what they used to be evolved into the silent but deadly comedy special that you can right. now get. Um, not not that we're trying to plug that because um, we're sounding a lot like a commercial more and more. Yeah. It's like, well, <laughs> what is your guys' purpose on the network? Can we talk about everything else is really cool? Yeah, so, uh, we're, you know. well, we just we're just here to help. We're just here. To, that's what we do. We try to. We, we we're just, like we're just. We're like the we're people at Disneyland that. that don't point at anything. They'll always use two or three or more fingers to tell you, indicate the direction. That's what we do. We're like, here, Babylon, over there, kind of thing. Um, it, but it really is, it is something to see live. And it, it is, uh, I think it's a great, uh, to some extent, they, they incorporate the audience in a really great way. Uh, so that's fun to check out. Kevin's Q&As, like I said, they evolve into other things eventually. So it's it's exciting to see those because you kind of get a preview of everything. Um and, you know, totally. the people that have been going to Jay and Silent Bob uh, get old for the past year have been they've been hearing exclusive scenes being read from Jay and Silent Bob uh, reboot. Yes. So, and, and 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 it's uh, he, he with the caveat of he's, he's trying to keep it under wraps so that it's, it's something special just for people that go there. So, yeah. So, so. Go, go 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 see it and, and uh, check it out. 
Definitely, if you can. The The cool thing is I have this now big library collection of all of these different readings from... So oh, if yeah. I wanted to, I could be obsessive, but, but I'm not going to do that. Cause that Start putting it together, yeah. That would be like, Will's gone completely nuts. That's what that, that is. That's, that's, when you, that's when you start wearing your, your Kevin costume to his house. Exactly. No, I'm Cos... Yeah, can you imagine Cos just showing up? <laughs> hey, Kevin, how's it going? Beard, hat backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Long you're out coat. of bounds. Like, what the f- Way out of bounds. It's like, no, we, we won't be needing your services anymore. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Will. By the way, can you uh, can you stop by and talk to Jordan on your way out? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Actually, sure. just send her an email. She'll give you the, the details. Yeah. <laughs> just make sure you contact us after you get home, okay? 300 yeah. and some odd miles away. That's, that's <laughs> probably best. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Well, anyway, man, thank you so much. Uh, I look forward to us still talking in the new year, regardless of of uh, how many times we do it or anything like that. Because it's it's not about the it's not about the quantity; it's about the quality. Yeah, I know. I always say that in podcasting, consistency is important, and you need to be frequent in order to keep your feed updated and active in people's uh, queue. But at the same time, look, man. Yeah, we're we're just on we're do- our own schedule. We're doing it for us. We are. We're doing it, but we appreciate you uh, joining us uh, in the journey. So uh, until next time, folks, my name is Will. And I'm Trent. And we will be back soon. This is NetHeads with Will Wilkins and Trent Hunsaker signing off. I know, right? But stop being a little Nancy and deal with it. NetHeads. 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 We'll be back soon. This has been a production of Smodco Internet Radio. Sir, only at Smodcast.com. I love that uh, the video now gets to be so much easier for me to do, and now it is becoming the least stable part of the program. That's my favorite part. (laughs) Right, yeah. I think. Because, you know, it's like, well, look, you know, some of the changes were to test some things out, but some of them also are preemptive. You know, like if you use Google Hangouts uh, as part of your repertoire, uh, you know, rumor has it that they're they're turning yeah. it down and it's done. So, yeah. you know, uh, we kind of had to, by default, go back to Skype and and Skype. Guess what? It, I mean, like I could have a second monitor hooked up and I can capture that monitor. That's how I can get you into uh, into the video. Other than that, I can try right. doing what I'm doing now because you can't just capture a window. You got to capture the entire screen, at least in my experience. Thing, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't want to play nice, Trent. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I mean, there are things that that try to capture the window, but it never works right. You have, you just have to do the whole the whole monitor. Right. So right now, we, you know, we're we're doing this via an NDI feed, so it's it's actually turning your stream into a network stream. That can be viewed yeah. as a capture device by like the software, uh, but now we're getting freezings and things because you know anytime I guess things get adverse, sure. it doesn't know what to do. It, it's a no-win scenario no matter what you do. Uh, but uh, but it's a little bit of a bummer because now it is just so easy to switch between you and I that I can hit all these buttons and life is so good. And and then I go over and it's like, oh look, Trent's frozen again. Well, that sucks. Oh, uh. it's okay though because even when you're frozen, you're you're still pretty hot, dude.